This is the box the Honor 300 Pro comes in. It's a pretty nondescript white box with a little bit of branding around it. Guys, once again, I've gone for the 12256 variant, which happens to be the base. Let me go ahead and cut through the plastic, peel it off. Once you open up the box, you're greeted by the Honor 300 Pro itself. I picked up the green colorway because initially, based on renders, I thought the green, this was the best looking skew this time. But now, after seeing actual videos of the phone, the warm white really looks good. What do you think? Which looks the best to you? The green or the white? Or maybe even the black? Let me know in the comments. Okay, moving on, we then have a SIM ejector tool, an informational booklet, a very thin TPU case, and that's followed by a USB Type-A to Type-C cable with orange accents, and finally, a 100 watt supercharger. Now this phone, it sports a 5300 mAh battery. I am not really sure what tech they've used, since on the official website, it says silicon carbon. And then on the same side, under the spec sheet, it reads lithium polymer. Either way, this battery can be charged from 0 to 50 in about 10 minutes, and a full charge should take you about 35. On top of this, Honor also offers support for wireless charging at up to 80 watts. Now, before we get to the design, if this is your first time here, or in case you just don't remember, because you've not subscribed yet, my name's Ash, you're watching c 4 Tech, and as the intro rolls, go on, drop this video a like, hit that subscribe button. From a design standpoint, there's good, there's bad. The good, the camera array, it looks unique. The design's fresh. The camera array's metal frame adds to the look. And this ridge, it kind of splits the back into two distinct parts. You know, when you hold it in hand, how the back feels. It's again, something that's a little different. And I kind of like it. You know what, to be completely honest, I fall somewhere between I kind of like it and I really don't care, as in, at worst, you could call it inoffensive. Now the patterns you see here, when this back catches light, they do look good. There's an IR blaster up top, cutouts for the secondary speaker. We do get good stereo audio on this one. There's an IP65 rating for protection against the elements. And this panel can be used with wet hands, even the fingerprint scanner given it's ultrasonic. But if you notice, the placement of the scanner, it's a little too low for my liking. Okay, now the bad. It's IP65, where most brands are offering at least IP68. And the sides, the back, they're both plastic. Well, at least the back's got a matte finish, the sides glossy, which is the worst kind of plastic, right? Now, to be fair, this does help keep the weight relatively low. The 300 Pro does feel light in hand, and given the back as well as the display curve on all four sides, it feels even slimmer than its 8.2 millimeter thickness. Now to the front, we have this pill-shaped cutout, which gives you dynamic island kind of interactions. This houses a 50 megapixel selfie camera along with a depth sensor. Now guys, be honest, do you really care about a depth sensor? Do you think Honor should have just gone with a hole punch instead? Let me know. Anyways, the field of view is wide and selfies turned out very nice. There's ample details, skin tones were on point and edge detection felt accurate too. Even under low light, the selfie camera held up. And with video, you can shoot up to 4K 30 with stabilization. So Honor seems to have done very well with the selfies. Now around these cameras is a 10-bit AMOLED panel. It's got a 1.5K resolution spread over 6.78 inches, giving it a pixel density of 437 PPI. So everything looks sharp. The display is fluid, thanks to that 120 Hz refresh. And Honor boasts of a brightness peak of 4000 nits, which is for HDR. In my testing, this panel output almost 1300 nits under auto, so it should be fine for outdoor use. Under low light, there is 3840Hz high frequency PWM dimming in case you're sensitive to OLED flicker. And there's also a whole host of eye protection features that Honor is offering. There's even one to help with motion sickness when using this phone in a moving vehicle. Now the Honor 300 Pro is running on Magic OS 9 which is built atop Android 15 and the user interface was pretty smooth, the animations appear fluid and there seems to be enough horsepower to maintain a stable and reliable user experience. And that's because for the 300 Pro, Honor has chosen to go with Qualcomm's flagship SoC from last year, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This is paired with 12 or 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and 256 or 512 gigs of fast UFS 4.0 storage. 
It's also worth mentioning that Honor seems to have done a good job with the cooling. Stability isn't the best. 75% is about average or maybe slightly above average for the HN3. But the important thing here is that they could improve it if they choose to. Let me explain. Now there is a whole lot of headroom. After the test, I was really surprised to see the Honor 300 Pro at 38 degrees, front and back. We've been seeing eight elites cross 50 degrees easy. So this is a very cool phone. And not just that, even games ran smooth, no stutters, no drops, and most importantly, absolutely no heating. The super resolution and frame generation options available. So gaming performance is pretty darn good. Okay, let's now move on to cameras. Here we get a triple camera setup. The primary is Sony's IMX906 paired with an f1.95 lens that is optically stabilized. It does perform well, images seem detailed, mostly well exposed, and Honor provides three color profiles to choose from. There's natural, vibrant, and authentic. A lot of these indoor pictures are shot on authentic. It gives you a contrasty vibe with slightly boosted saturation, which is pretty nice when you're shooting indoors. Outdoors, I mostly ended up using vibrant. Now, regardless of what I use, this camera has a slight tendency to lean towards the cold with processing, as in the blues get elevated a little. But for the most part, images turned out fine. And this continued under low light too. The Honor 300 Pro performed reasonably well. Is it as good as the 8 Elite flagships we've been seeing? Definitely not. It's a rung below. But the performance, I'd call it above average for sure. Now the secondary is yet another Sony sensor, IMX856. This is paired with an f2.4 telephoto that provides 3x optical zoom. This lens is also optically stabilized. Zoomed in shots turned out nice. The studio hardcore portraits are also available here. The 3x telephoto is just perfect for getting these portrait shots. And then finally, we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide, which is just about okay. It fits more into the frame and that's about it. It does have autofocus and lets you shoot macro such as this. Now from a video perspective, the primary and the telephoto both max out at 4K 60, and you can switch between these two sensors while you're shooting. The ultra wide that maxes out at 4K 30. Honor is also continuing to include a bunch of AI related features like AI eraser to remove something from an image after it's been shot. AI outpainting works surprisingly well in generating stuff around the image if you're changing the aspect ratio. Even with complex shots like this, I like the results I was seeing. And then we have AI styles, which lets you kind of anime yourself if that's something you want to do. Honor has also included a bunch of gesture controls. Usually I find these gimmicky, but hey, if you like it, it's available. Now in China, the Honor numbered series is seen as a offline focused product. So it's typically not seen as great value. And here, if you look at the vanilla Honor 300, it's an abysmal value proposition given it's powered by the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3, not even the 7 Plus Gen 3. The Honor 300 Ultra on the other hand, basically gets you the same everything as the 300 Pro but with a glass or eco leather back and a periscope telephoto with slightly longer reach. But these couple of things to me didn't really justify the 8 Elite level pricing. You know, the entry level 8 Elite kind of pricing is what that phone uh, is being sold at. So I decided to choose what I thought was the best value, the Honor 300 Pro. Now don't get me wrong, it's still not very aggressively priced at 33.99 RMB. It's knocking on the doorsteps of 8 Elite phones like the GT7 Pro and iQ13. Talking about iQ, if you are interested in the HN3, iQ's Neo 10 does offer a better bang for your buck. So while the Honor 300 Pro seems like a well-rounded device, unless the positioning changes drastically when it goes global, I don't think it will be the best value proposition at its price. So the short version, good phone, slightly higher price. So what do you think about the Honor 300 Pro? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, drop this video a like, get subscribed so that you don't miss out on more of my coverage on phones like this that have just launched or are about to launch, including the iQ Neo 10. Anyways, thanks for watching. Ash, out.